Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. I have a special guest for you. Somebody that has been on Dion from Dion Talks show. Uh, someone who has read and follows the one rental at a time theme and concept. But let's be honest, he does it different. He's like, why do one at a time when I could do one building at a time? He has, uh, as I understand it, gotten up to 77 units inside of under two years. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's hear about the story, how he did it. Let me ask a bunch of questions. How are you doing, Christian? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. That's, that's quite impressive. 77 doors, 18 months, certainly not normal. Uh, why don't we take go back to the beginning, kind of figure out how all of this thing started, and uh, we'll just kind of unpack this story for the folks. Awesome. Well, I'd started like a lot of people. I was working a nine to five. I'd always wanted to get into real estate, and I, I took a less than direct route. I <laughs> ended up working for a company called Land.com. They got bought by the CoStar Group, who owns LoopNet and Apartments.com, mm -hmm. a lot of those mega sites. Yep. And I spent about four years in there making the decision, hey, I want to be a landlord, but not buying any real estate, um, which is one of the first rules I came up for. If you want to be an investor, the fastest way to do it is to buy an investment. You can't be an investor <laughs> without the, uh, you can't do it without the real estate. And it, it, it seems obvious, but I feel like that is where most people get stuck is getting over that first hurdle takes a while. Yeah. Uh, you, you've, uh, it goes from interest to committed. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I, I talked to a lot of people like I'm hundred percent committed. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm like, well, you're not in until you're in. You're so, not in until you're exactly right. I and like whether that. it's a, a 12 plex, a 40 unit building, a duplex, whatever size building, the size of the deal doesn't matter. It has to cash flow, oh. especially your first deal has to cash flow. But you, you need cash flow. But as long as you can do that, there's two questions you answer. How do I own it? Mm -hmm. And how do I never lose it? And the answer to the never lose it is cash flow. But if you can answer those two things, that's enough to get you into your first property and you can figure out the rest. So for myself, mm -hmm. uh, the end of 2020, okay. I had an opportunity to buy a duplex off market in Bremerton, just a conventional purchase. I'm sorry, where is that? What state's that in? Uh, Washington. Okay. So, right. uh, so Bremerton, it's about an hour south of Seattle. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my apologies. Um, two units, yeah. very, very, very decent cash flow. Uh, it was a a stellar deal. And that was enough for me to get over my fear of first deal. I was like, well, it's so, so, so let's talk about it a little bit. I just want to unpack it. So everybody yeah. can see how you start and you know, the, where you've, where you are now is impressive, but it all starts with the first one. Yeah. So do you remember the purchase price? Uh, purchase price was three ninety five, And you said it was off market. Uh, yeah. Did you move into one of them in house hack like Dion or was this straight up to, in, to rentals? That was just a rental. I, okay. I own my own house over in Renton, also a little south of Seattle. And okay, opportunity came up, but yeah, just conventional purchase. Okay, so 20% down, 25, just regular loan, kind of boring stuff. Yeah, well, I actually was able to buy it under rules of uh, essentially using it like a, a second home. So they allowed me to go, the lender let me go 10% down on it because uh, okay. there was a big vacant unit. Um, mm -hmm. I did use it for a little while and then. Okay. We ended up renting the whole thing out. So it was about 10% oh, down on the first deal. Plan, plans change. So again, 10% down, meaning uh, they called it a second home. So they, they did a straight up just 90% first. It wasn't like an 80, 10, 10 or something. Exactly. Okay. All right. So you get in, you uh, you clean it up. Uh, how much? What, what? So 395, what was your make ready cost? I mean, what did it cost to clean up the vacant unit? Um, it costs a couple thousand dollars. It was so not ready, much you know, when I bought it. it was, it was clean. There's a, a couple little appliances that needed to be worked on, but it was more okay. or less. So almost yeah, turnkey. It's still my most turnkey property I've ever purchased. All right. Very cool. So three ninety five. How'd you find it? Just network mailers, cold calling. What were we doing? Yeah, I, I was working. Um, I'd left the co-star group recently was working for a brokerage running a call center. Uh, mm -hmm. was, I came from the research world and I was like, well, let's hire a team of researchers. There you go. Um, someone that we called, I just answered, answered the phone. We were interviewing them about their duplex and mm -hmm. they're like, well, I'd, I'd actually kind of like to get rid of it. I just don't yeah. want to listen. And I was like, this feels like a sign. Let's yeah. do it. Let me think. Do you know I, anyone? I, I, I'm, like, in, I'm interested, but not committed yet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, so uh, like did you, I'm guessing off market, did you roll into value right away or was it kind of at market or what do you think? Uh, it was probably a little under market. It wasn't, not way under market, but. Um, so it was a fair deal for everybody. 
Yeah, the, okay. the rents were unusually good in it, though. So it helps my, my cash flow that I'm like, wow, this is actually renting a, what I thought was a little above market. Okay. So or if that was 2020, so market caught right up. But yeah, exactly. uh, that's not the reason I bought it. The, the yep. numbers made sense. Day one, just cash on cash. It was cash flowing about 25%, which is excellent. Yeah. All right. So, okay, you get your first one. You get in for roughly 40 grand. Mm -hmm. right? The down, the closing costs make ready. It's cash flowing. It's, it's putting some money in your pocket. You went from interested to committed. Yep. And as I call it, the first one is always kind of proof of concept because you just don't know till you know. Yes. How, how soon after the first one did you get the second one? Uh, went under contract for the second one in February. It took a little while. We, we had to move tenants out of it. That one was going to be a reno project. Mm -hmm. So on that deal... Um, I believe I closed it in June, um, but started the process almost immediately. Closed one in December, got my legs back under me, and we went right back after it. Okay. Uh, again, kind of, what was the second one? Sorry, was it another duplex or what was That it? was another duplex. That was in okay. a city called Moses Lake. If you don't know where it is, you're like no, everyone okay. else. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, it is, uh, that is about 200 miles away from me uh, oh, in wow. central Washington. It's okay. a small town, maybe 20,000 person population. Oh, yeah. Tiny. Okay. Yeah. Little Lake town. All right. So uh, same deal, same deal off market kind of thing or what? So that one was on market and it okay. sat on market for a while. The ah. units were a little gross. They were just incredibly under the, uh, they're incredibly under market price, but mm -hmm. the rent was just almost non-existent. They were renting for a few hundred bucks a month. Oh, wow. Okay. The reason I was comfortable doing this deal is one, I knew I could handle a duplex because I proved I can do a duplex. My good friend, Cody, who's now my business partner, owned the sixplex directly on the other side of the street and ah. was renting one beds in an old sixplex for a lot more than these two beds were renting for in a duplex with a yard. Right. Okay. So we ended up buying the property. Um, it was a turnaround. So I bought it 101% financed. I found a lender who would do that. Wow. At this was early 2020? Uh, this would have been very early 2021. Oh, 2021. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. 2020. Wow. All right. So you got full, like, would this be a bank or a hard money, private money? What, who's doing this loan? Yeah, it was a, uh, it was a, a private lender. Okay. Uh, right. So it, it was hard money. It was 9.9% .9 interest. Yeah. Uh, I had the contractor in place. So it was about a two month project. It's another thing people get stuck on now you don't want to buy deals that cash flow negative day one that's probably a little early in my career to have done that that being said probably when you're going at these i, I was fully committed i'm like well i'm gonna do it um two months at ten percent on a two hundred thousand dollar duplex is not a lot of money you need to have a very 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 clear plan if you're going to do this mm -hmm. i had the bank financing already lined up my lender loved the property was ready to refinance it mm -hmm. It was about three weeks after we finished the reno and signed the leases. The mm -hmm. bank finance came in right behind it. Cash flowed a uh, duplex, cash flowed about $1,400 a month. All right. So let's talk about this because it's that's faster than normal. Um, mm. So again, so the, they you, you had it financed for 101% with hard money uh, at purchase, yep. which to me means, because again, you said this was a reno product. You had you had to fund the repair money. It sounds like that I did. Okay. That I did. That was and that was about fifty thousand in total repairs. Okay, so so now you're into this. So now you're into it two fifty, right? You got two hundred grand hard money, fifty k. Yeah, ready? Okay. just about. It was yeah. uh, technically right. about two ten. I bought it for. So I'm in about two sixty. Yeah, right. Okay, round numbers two sixty. Yeah. So now you go back to the bank. You haven't seasoned it yet, right? Seasoning for people that know a lot of banks like six months. Mm -hmm. You've had it. You, you've owned it for three months. It sounds like you've had it rented for like three seconds. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so what did the bank do? Did they come in and, and do a whole new appraisal? Did they go off purchase? What would they do? Yep. They brought in a whole new appraisal. Oh, wow. Um, and they came in, took a whole look at it. They used, uh, I hadn't seasoned it. You're right. So they just used market rents, which were way lower than mm -hmm. uh, what I rented it for. They, they pegged market rents at like 950. I was renting it for 14 aside. Oh, wow. I was like, well, I, the income doesn't count, but at the end of the day, it also doesn't matter. Um, mm. The refinance went through about 20,000 of my 50,000 came back in the refinance. Okay. So, so the, the hard, day, hard money's paid off. 
you, you get 20 grand. So you have 30 K still in that deal, at least 30K that in the deal and positive cash flow about $1,400 a month. All right. So in my world, right, my world for folks that know my stuff, right? So you're 30 grand's the denominator, the top numbers, let's just call it 12. So that's what a 40% return. That's, that's not bad. That, that, that gave me more confidence of, Hey, we yeah, I would hope so. 40% is not that bad. I'm like, I'm like, okay. The first one made me money. And the second one made more money. Um, okay. Maybe we can do this. Um, at this time, my business partner, Cody Davis said uh, he bought his first 12 plex at 19. Um, wow. Raised the down payment mm -hmm. and bought a 12 plex effectively zero down. He had $3,000 at the time, never had a W2 seller financed a 12. He did it again in Moses, and then he had just bought that sixplex when I moved in. So he was okay. uh, 21 years old with 30 units, mm -hmm. and I was looking across the street at 29, going, "Huh." How I set this goal that? a long time ago, <laughs> 30 units by 30, and I'm at four, and I'm 29, so I'm running a little low on time. <laughs> and I brought the problem to Cody, and I was like, "I don't know how you did what you did, right? But I'm really impressed." And here's my goal, and. Yeah. We went out to lunch and Cody's like, well, I have an idea. I can't take it down myself, but there's a 38 unit across town. And this is still in that, a, this is still in that little Lake community. Yep. That's okay. still in Moses Lake, Washington. Okay. 38 All right. units. All right. It has every problem you can imagine is another example of exactly what you don't buy when you're starting. Yeah. Uh, homeless camp entrenched oh. on there. Um, a lot of non pays, yeah. but the pieces we had is, Cody knew how to buy some dumpy properties mm -hmm. and manage them. I knew he could do 30 and he did it very, very well, very, very yeah. profitably. Okay. I had a construction team that could do two units. In theory, they could do 38. Um, we had a relationship in the town and I had a property management team uh, that I was already very close with who I knew could help me execute and turn this around. Okay. So we picked up the property. The well, first... hold, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. I dive right in. I, I like to skip some so, of the steps. So, there's a seller somewhere who owns yeah. that 38 prop 38 yes, unit yes, property there is. that um, for whatever reason doesn't mm -hmm. care because he's he or she is not making any money on that property. No, they bought it years and years and years ago for it's a, it's 38 units in Washington state for about $200,000. Yeah. And they're about breaking even on the property. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to do. It is hard to do. You uh, and they were they were very old. It's been on market the property for thirteen years at the exact same price. They had it listed for two million dollars for thirteen years, and no one bought it. Shocking. Yeah, no way, right? It's a heck of a project. Yeah, I mean, okay, so okay, so you see it listed. Your buddy who's nineteen or twenty or whatever at this point has known about it for a while because it's listed. Everybody sees it. Yep. Uh. I'm guessing you don't pay two million. We I'm pay guessing. two million. Oh, you do. I do pay two million. All so, right. Why, why does one pay two million for a property that's been on the market for 13 years at two million? Well, for one, it's a heck of a discount on today's numbers. It's appreciated quite a bit. Fifty-five thousand a unit is yeah. okay. There's nothing wrong with the price for for what you're buying. The price isn't the problem. Well, okay. Well, hold on. So, uh, what is that? Thirty-eight k at thirty. What is it? Thirty-eight units. Again? Yeah, thirty-eight units. So divided what is by that two. indoor? Um, that's somewhere in the ballpark of 55. Cody's oh, my, you, you did my mental math, math guy. Already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's call it 52 K a door. Okay. Yeah. So 50 K 52 K a door in 2021 in Washington's a fair price is what you're saying. So I have I, no idea. Is, I don't know the market. It, that is a stellar price. Oh, uh, stellar price. Okay. In that market duplexes. So how uh, do you finance it? So that's, that's, the, that's the piece. So there's, there's two pieces when you're looking at a deal and Cody and I use a lot of seller financing. That's how we moved through a lot of what we do. Okay. And you can either have price or you can have terms and you usually can't have both. Totally agree. Uh, I've had a deal in Seattle where we did get both, but that one's kind of a unicorn for this building. I'm like, there's nothing inherently wrong with the price. Like it doesn't line up at all with the performance of the property, Right. but for what you're actually buying, the price isn't ridiculous. The okay. problem are the terms. There's no way a bank's going to lend on it because it's not run right. The, yep. the books are junk. There's it, the buildings need renovation. Yep. It's just kind of, it's kind of dumpy. So your options are a cash buyer or seller financing. Mm. In is seller financing was never listed as an option. What we did is we met with the broker who was their niece. Uh, of course just, it was. We got together. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, 
also helping manage the property. So it, it, it would decline. They all know it's a problem. Right. And we just got together. It's like, look, we've between the two of us, we've bought 32 units in this market. Right. We're completely committed. We're, to we're committed to the market, right? Okay. Yeah. You, you've seen us close. Uh, we've done transactions with her brokerage firm. Okay. We will close this, but we need some help on the terms. We, we need to make this make sense. Okay. I knew with the team I had, we can get the income up quite a bit within the first year by at least triple, just because there's so many people not paying. It's like right. not pay is paying and you're, you're, you're pretty well said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we negotiated for, Hey, can we have a very, very low down payment mm-hmm. for the first six months while we start stabilizing the property, working with HUD, getting back to rent in and starting to renovate units. Okay. And they came back with, well, really what we need is we need to see $10,000 a month in income. That is what we need. They're in their eighties. Mm. They're like, we just want to retire. And that gets us to where we need to be. So I'm like, well, let's come up with a plan to step this up to the 10,000 you need. That's a huge chunk of principal pay down. Yeah. No joke. Um, because we borrowed, uh, we ended up doing 15% down. So $300,000 down. Okay. Which we also raised. So $0 out of our pocket. But so, we bought- so you have, so they're in at first position for 1.85 and then you have investors with a second, I'm guessing or something. That is exactly how we did it. Okay. All right. So we brought them in and with the same understanding, it's not cash flow in day one. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's all based on a higher buyout yep. in the future. Of course. We pick up the property and it just about breaks even for us at start, which is given the situation, buying a non-performing building, yeah. $2 million, it's yeah. not bad. It's just about break even. Okay. We got renovation teams in there and almost instantly just started getting checks for all the non-pays, three months rent into the future, uh, which was just a huge cash infusion. Um, yeah, sure, the city yeah. also came in and bought a little teeny sliver of land from us for a development they're doing which gave us another $30,000 in the operating account. So we had a few things go in our favor really early. Sure. But we got the property stable in six months. We quadrupled the income on it. It's now a cash flow monster. So that, so let's just break that down. Cause again, so 38 units in six months, it doesn't, again, I've been doing this a long time. It doesn't, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing you did not touch every, you didn't remodel every unit in 38 and six no, months. No, we did not. We, yeah. uh, okay. We did five of them heavy, heavy reno. Makes like, sense. Like yeah, yeah. twenty five thousand yeah. dollars into a one bed. I understand. Uh, yeah. And they're gorgeous. Uh, we did a lot of touch up on on other ones. People would move out. They were clean yeah. enough units. We came in, paint, fixed whatever was broken. And there's such a need for entry level housing. We oh, just totally. instantly filled. Yeah. Uh, but we got the vacancies from seven to two in mm-hmm. almost no time. Right. And then there was just so. I think there's 10 non-pays who just stopped paying yeah. before COVID. They just stopped paying. Yeah. Well, um, and no one did anything. Uh, we got that problem solved as soon as they saw energy going into the property. And that's a huge thing as a landlord is if mm-hmm. you buy properties, it needs to be somewhere you would be willing to live. I promise you no human should live there day one. Right. Uh, a lot of cockroaches and other gross is, is not fun, yep, yep. but we had a plan of how we're going to get it there. And there Cody and I rent one of the units from mm. ourselves there. And that's our crash pad. It's a gorgeous little place. And nice. I can empirically say I would stay in that building today. There you go. I like that. So, okay. So again, um, so six months incomes quadrupled, you're paying back your lenders. Everybody's happy. Um, how much what, what, uh, estimate, what was the total make ready? Cause you said five times 25, that's a buck and a quarter. So what are you like 200 grand in make ready costs? Over yeah, six months? Well, I think we're in the ballpark of 175 to 200. Okay. All and right. it's, it's just become a great performing asset. Um, we're right now doing takeout financing. Mm-hmm. Um, appraisals looking like it's coming in north of 3 million. Yep. Um, and we're taking out to connect to sewer, uh, put on a new roof on one of the buildings. It's a, okay. it's a four building complex. Okay. But the thing's getting really, really nice. We started with the interiors. We replaced a bunch of appliances for people. But sure. the difference on that property was that the property had received no love and had a lot of problems, just a yeah. ton of problems. Yeah. We came in and right off the bat, we asked everyone who needs new appliances and not a lot of people raised their hand. But mm. when we did it, we lined up all the appliances outside. And we made sure everyone saw we're updating these. Appliances are going in. Things are getting nicer. They see the construction crews out there updating units, the marble countertops, not marble, but granite, stone countertops. 
mm-hmm. being delivered into the units. And all of a sudden we get another wave of request of, oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, my yeah. oven hasn't worked for three years. And it's like, okay. Yeah. I only got one burner that works. Yeah. Yeah. And and that one catches fire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just small details. <laughs> and so we just came in and we just keep putting energy in the property. And we're physically there. Our property manager's there. Uh, so I don't are you still working a full-time job at this point? I left the nine to five right around this point. It was actually okay. shortly after close. Okay. And then we had done since that point in the next nine months, we did a, a six plex, a seven plex, uh another six plex. I mean, so, so if you were to, if you were going to kind of hone in on what you and Cody do your mm-hmm. thing, is it fair to say that it is, um, unloved properties, uh, where sellers are willing to finance a large, if not the entire purchase while you work on them. And then you cash them out some point in the future. Is that it's your been, thing? It's been a large piece of it but our thing is relationships over transactions Ah, so when i bought that duplex i called the multifamily owners around my property and Mm -hmm. i didn't say i didn't do the script that i think a lot of people use which is hey i I just moved in the area i'm an investor would you consider an offer on your property because i i don't even know how i'd buy the properties i was was out of money yeah exactly i just want to meet them (laughs) i'm like i'm broke um but there's there's a 12 plex across the street and I don't know how to buy a 12 plex. I've never done it before. And so I had a phone call and it was, Hey, I'm Christian. I, I just bought my first duplex in Moses Lake. I have this goal of not just retiring myself, but retiring my wife from the school district. And I realized it's going to take a long time to do one duplex at a time. Yeah. It's an awesome strategy. And what I love about one rental at a time, by the way, is that anyone can do it. You don't have to just sell out everything into real estate. Mm-hmm. anyone anywhere anytime can do this mm-hmm. our method is definitely hard mode it's super active mm-hmm. and it's you you lose a little bit more hair I, yeah uh, yeah you pr- again i just, again tell me if i'm wrong but kind of what i look at the strategy i've i've know lots of people that kind of go this path but it's really hard to have a full-time job especially if it's 200 miles away as you scale if you're running your business and you're you're over 30 units it gets hard. We started our own property management company and there's an education company on, mm-hmm. that we started parallel for relationship-based mm-hmm. real estate. But at the end of the day, I mean, we've done some deals that are like, I have some gorgeous duplexes. We're also 10% down, wow. very low interest under market rate. And they do that because they've invested in our story. They see what we're building. Mm-hmm. They're excited. Mm-hmm. And we never asked them for a property. We just kept asking, how did you build what you built? You're at these guys have like a hundred units mm-hmm. and I'm like, I, I don't know how you did that in your lifetime. Yeah. And they plopped us in their truck. They drove around the city and mm-hmm. went, this is how we bought this. And this is how we bought this. And if you want to get creative on a zero down deal, here's an idea for you. And they taught us all these things. Yeah. Then we yeah. applied them and came back and said, you know what? We did exactly what you said. Right. Now they know we can execute. And they're like, you know what? We could sell these for more to other people and they're beautiful properties. Mm-hmm but we want them to go to you because we trust that you're going to carry basically they want to get paid back. They want to get paid. Yeah. And they're, they have enough money. They're like, well, I don't, I don't need the money. Let's just make it a cash flow problem. Let's do a a seller contract for five years and then install the refinance. Seller refinance. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. But it is relationships are, yeah. Relationships are, are, um, I, I've been very clear, I think, with my audience. I think I think the environment is changing. We've gone from FOMO on the buyer side to FOMO on the seller side. Uh, mm-hmm. There are motivated sellers out there. That the, the, the unfortunate part is they typically don't stand up and raise their hands. So you have to fish for them. You have to find them. There are sellers off market. A lot of the deals that I did seller financing were off market. You're, you're just known as a producer, mm-hmm. right? They have confidence you're going to pay them back. Yeah. And I, and, and it's funny, I, I get asked all the time about interest rates on seller finance deals. I almost never quote a rate. I'm like, what do you need a month? Yeah. Right. You need 10 grand in your example. You need five grand. And then I just back into a number that works. They don't care. I have interest rates at 1%. I have, I have wow. a, I have a three per, I have a 3% 17 year note. Cause again, that's where the math worked out. Right. I'm like, okay, you want this. We think the value is about this. Why don't I give you, you, you want four grand. I'll give you 4,100, but it's going to be a 17 year note. Okay. Done. Yeah. 
And my only negotiating point is, has ever been, I'm like, well, look at, I can execute. We can do the math. We can renovate. We can operate. We know what we're doing. Um, I have everything but money. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Let's, and let's get, that one and, piece. And yeah. That. It, it, and the other thing is these people that have these properties, don't beat them up. Don't yeah. tell them you've got a dump with a homeless camp and all. They know. Yeah. They don't, they don't need to hear that. What they want to hear is, for me, it's never really been about the down payment or the interest rates. It, it, I've had some people say, okay, do you have the make ready costs? Well, I'm like, well, for me, I could say a bank statement. The first time I did it, I had to escrow the money to title company, whatever, right? It's, it's, it, they want assurances um, that they're going to be paid back. Uh, and now that you've done it a couple of times, you have references that it's, once you've done it a couple of times, it's really easy because you can just have one owner tell another owner, yeah, uh, Cody and Christian never missed a payment easy to deal with. They did what they said they were going to do. And it's, it's magic. And the nice thing is, and I, I do acknowledge the market timing was, it was intentional. We, we saw the economics and, and printing of money. And I was like, well, we, we if they were going to go hard, this is the time to go hard on acquisition. But now we're in the point where after a year and a half, I can do that now because now I'm not in the position where I don't have money. There's no alligators in the portfolio. Everything mm-hmm. cash flows. Yeah. Cody's at 85 units. I'm at 77. We have enough cash flow where, yeah, now I get to do the bank statement and we don't have to be as creative. Exactly. I still love being creative because oh, it's easier yeah. to multiply 5% down than it is 25% down. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's all it's about is there's three points of communication. And you asked what our thing is. This is it. We call it the circle drill, but you put yourself at the center of your circle. There's three points of communication, relatability, which is where you're going to connect with them, having a clear goal, because that's something that they can buy into and having significance behind that goal. Why is it important that you achieve that? I've mapped that out for all sorts of things going from like relatability of, Hey, I played soccer and this is what I want to do to bigger goals. Like I want to retire my wife or my dad provided for a single income, but he had no time because he worked 11 hours a day, six days a week. I want both time with my kids and to provide. I can tell a story around relatability for, Hmm. I believe this costs this much. I have a clear target of, I want this in real estate and it's important because my kids are going to have time with me. I can do that story in about 45 seconds. Hmm. And the rest of the meeting is learning their story. Exactly. What do they care about? Where are they going? And why is it important that they reach it? And if you can line those two things up, you get complete buy-in and you'll understand what the right proposal is because instead of calling them like, Hey, you want to see an offer? It's, I appreciate you meeting with me based on our last conversation. I had a thought, can we sit down again? And that's the whole thing. And people complicate it. Mm -hmm. Instead of making a hundred calls a week, Cody and I each probably make two to five calls to owners, maybe one a day. And I'll meet with two people a week. And I do that every week all year. And throughout the year, you meet about a hundred people. Yeah. That's a lot of owners. And when you're just telling stories, yeah, deals just flow. Yeah. Um, you can totally do real estate with a full-time job over 20 years. And you're going to be so ridiculously far ahead of 99.9% of the population. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. What I'm really passionate about is you can go all out and you can go fast and you can put relationships first. It's all about just setting your goal and knowing your why. And if, if your goal and your why are big enough, just match your actions to that. If buying a house a year, a rental house or a, a duplex is going to get you to whatever your goal is, do that. And if you love your job, get financial freedom and then you get to go to work. You don't have to go to work. I'm not a, you know, everyone get out of the nine to five guy. It's, it, it's do what you want and own your time. And my whole message is just build relationships and you can do this in two years. I mean. I'm out. I, right. I'm going to keep building and I love this, but as of probably just a few months ago, I, I don't have to, it's, yeah, it's exactly. passive. Yeah. Well, Christian, uh, where can people, if they want to learn more about what you and Cody are doing, you know, this relationships, where, where do you want, where do you want to send them? Well, I put everything we do online for free. It's so important. If we want to show people it's possible that we share the story. So we have a YouTube channel, Cody and Christian multifamily strategy. If you want to take a deep dive and go quicker, we do have an online course. It's the multifamilystrategy.com. It's hosted by Lightspeed. It's four-minute video clips, a couple hundred videos just going through 
how to analyze, how to build relationships and some scripting points around, you know, how are you going to talk to a broker? How does the meeting go with the owner? And, you know, we go through some other tricks in there, but those are the two best ways to do this. If you want to know everything for free, hop over to YouTube. If you want to fast track it, the multifamily strategy.com. Awesome. One more time. What's the YouTube channel? Uh, Cody and Christian multifamily strategy. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, absolutely.